right. So good to see everybody out this morning. Amen. It's Missionary Week. Amen. We're glad to have you with us. Let's all get our book now and turn to page number 465. 465. Draw me nearer. We'll sing the first and the last stanza. Amen. I am thine, O Lord. I have heard thy voice, and it told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer drawn to thee. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. There are depths of love that I cannot know till I cross the nearer to himself every single day, and uh, praise the Lord for that. We appreciate you being out for Sunday School. Uh, great to have the McPike family with us today. Uh, be sharing their video and burden uh, this morning and uh, preaching for us uh, in the evening service tonight. So you got to be back tonight uh, to hear them. And so uh, thankful for them being with us today. Start our missions month. And so praise the Lord for that. And then we're also starting our new A to Z discipleship class. Uh, so uh, as soon as we sing next song, for those that want to take part in that, head on to the back uh, for Sunday School. Brother Jack? You and Vicky aren't fighting, are you? <laughs> I know you're talking when we started. Uh, good to see Brother uh, Jimmy with us today, and uh, thank you, praise the Lord for that. Been praying for them as well, and so let's. Uh, and good to have my mom and Jim uh, with us again as well. And so let's pray and ask God to bless the Sunday school, and then we'll move right into the service. And so, Brother Brandon, uh, taking care of the sound. So if there's any issues, it's not his fault. It's the devil, the devil in the sound system. Uh, and so pray for us, Brandon. Turn in your books if you need them to 566. We'll sing that little chorus. It is no secret what God can do. Amen. It is no secret what God can do, what he's done for others. He'll do for you. Dismissed to your classes.
All right, if you have your Bibles, turn with us now to Titus chapter number 2. For the last several months, we've been studying on the seven dispensations, amen. And we got to the dispensation of the grace of God, amen, and was nearing the end of that when I had to uh, take some time off because of my surgery to get a new knee, amen. I finally got the second new knee, amen, and I'm looking forward to brand new knees when I see Jesus, <laughs> amen. Uh, it's been a rough two months there, uh, uh, a week after the surgery, I was home and pretty much in pain, and our little uh, chihuahua that we've had for 18 years passed away on us, and that was really hard for my wife to take and such. And then I, I had something happen with my neck uh, called thoracic radiolopathy, and I don't want to have to spell that, <laughs> amen, but it, uh, the, the pain in the arm was actually worse than the pain in the surgery in the knee, amen. Uh, but through the grace of God, I got through it, amen, and last week was my first week back into the uh, pulpit here. And we kind of went off on a different subject, but we're going to get back now on the, on the subject that we've been studying. Now, since I've been gone for two months, we're going to go kind of through a little synopsis or a brief study of the things that we studied up uh, till now in the dispensation of grace. Amen. And then we're going to head into the last of the dispensations, the dispensation of the kingdom of God. Amen which is in our future. Now, we're living in the dispensation of grace today, amen. And the one thing that we've seen in every dispensation is man didn't do so well, amen. Man has failed in every dispensation. And when we think about the course of man as, as far as uh, all of mankind, you can see in the world that we're living in today that the world will turn their heart away from God. Uh, now, when we were talking about uh, the dispensation of the law, amen, we talked a great deal about uh, a remnant. There was always a remnant. There was always some in Israel that did not turn their hearts away from God, amen. And I think there's a remnant today. If we're saved, we're part of that remnant today, <laughs> amen, in the New Testament area, area that we're living in, amen. But in uh, Titus chapter number 2 and starting with verse number 11, it says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared unto the chosen people. Oh, that's right. I'm glad you're looking along with me, amen. And I don't believe in this idea that God has looked down upon the face of the earth and he chose and said, okay, you're going to go to heaven, but you're going to go to hell. You're going to go to heaven, but you're going to go to hell. This verse tells us pretty clearly, it says that the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared unto all men, amen. God would have all men to be saved. For by grace are ye saved through faith and that not of yourselves, amen. Now let's read on a further. It says, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. Let's have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we're so grateful again for the opportunity we have to gather together. In your holy and precious name, we thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for the word of God that's been given to us where we can glean uh, the, the precious truths, Lord, about the love of Jesus Christ and how he died for our sins and, and was buried and was resurrected the third day and that he's seated at the right hand of the Father and that we're, living, uh, we're, we're serving a living uh, God, dear Heavenly Father, I praise now, uh, pray, Lord, dear Heavenly Father, that you give us the words to say that would be a blessing and a challenge to each and every one here. God, I pray as we even go into the 11 o'clock hour, God, and our pastor brings a message of the hour, Lord, that some poor soul might come to the saving of Jesus before it's eternally too late. Thank you now for what you have done and for what you're going to do, and we'll not fail to give you the praise when we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, as we were studying the dispensation of the law, we, re we remember that the law was given as a means for the salvation of the uh, uh, Jewish people in the Old Testament. The problem was they didn't keep it. Nobody ever has. Amen. And it's not the law that can uh, cause a person to go into heaven because nobody can keep. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of the God. The Bible says, as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin... So death passed upon all men. Why? 
for all have sinned, amen. Amen. So uh, uh, keeping the law was not going to be a, a, a means of salvation because nobody was able to do it. But even God's grace was shown in, 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 in the, uh, uh, the sacrificing of the animals, amen, of the Old Testament. The Bible tells us whenever there, there was sin in the lives of the, of the Jewish people, that a, a sacrifice would be brought to the priest, amen, at the temple or at the tabernacle in the wilderness journeys and all men. And, and the, the priest would look at the animal that was to be sacrificed, and he'd put his hand on the sinner and put his hand on the animal. And the Bible tells us that that was kind of an indication that this animal, this lamb, is going to take the place of this sinner, amen, and then the blood would be shed. But the Bible tells us that, the, that in the Old Testament that it didn't wash away their sins, but it covered their sins, amen. Now, if you cover something up, that doesn't mean it's, uh, it's no longer existing, amen. Uh, uh, you can uh, 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 take one of these flags and cover up my glasses. You won't be able to see them, amen, because they're covered, but those glasses still exist, amen. But the Bible tells us if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we can have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all unrighteousness, and that's what happens in the age of grace that we're living in right now, amen. We no longer have to sacrifice animals, amen, because Jesus Christ, the lamb slain from the foundation of the earth, came to this earth. He bled and suffered and died in order that we might have salvation through his blood, amen. And when we give our hearts to the Lord, we are born into his family, and our sins are now washed away. They no longer exist, amen. And now, now the Bible says, uh, says in uh, Ephesians, Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast, amen. I'm going into heaven, amen, because of what Jesus did for me, amen, but it's not my works that's getting me there. It's not what I've done that's getting me into heaven, it's what Jesus done for me, amen. But because I am saved, because I am born again, amen, because God has uh, adopted me into his family, amen, and I've been born into the family of God, then I have a desire to serve the Lord. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So the works that I do are not to obtain salvation, but the results of my salvation. Amen. I gave my heart to the Lord. Jesus saved me because I asked him. Romans 10, 9. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. But he made a new creature in me and gave me a desire. Now, have I been perfect? No, no, no. <laughs> and far from it. Amen. But the Bible tells us if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. So the, the dispensation of the law ended when Jesus Christ died on the cross. He died and he was buried. He resurrected it, amen. And then he ascended into heaven, amen. And he seated at the right hand of the Father today, amen. Just before he left in Mark chapter number 16, he gave the great commission. He told the disciples, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, amen. Amen. Now, not all of us have the opportunity that we can go to the world, but we have our little place here. In Acts chapter 1, before he ascended into heaven, he said, you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem. That was their their hometown. He said, and, and in uh, uh, Samaria, amen, that's kind of the outcast of the people, amen. That's what God wants us to do. He says, in all Judea, amen, which, the, which was the country that they lived in, amen. And then he said, to the uttermost parts of the world, amen. Now, we all can't do that. We all can't go to different places, but I thank God for our church. And how we are able to, to help folks like these people here, amen, that are going to Scotland, amen, uh, to, uh, uh, to proclaim the gospel, amen. And we, we have an opportunity to help through our prayerful support and through our uh, uh, giving, amen, and through the missionary uh, offerings that come in. And, and we, we are able to do that, amen. I believe it's important that we take our, our Jerusalem, amen, Charlottesville here, Keswick, amen, and do everything we can to tell the people in our uh, uh, area that we live in here, that Jesus Christ is born, amen, and he died for their sins, amen. Uh, I just thank God for a, a, a people that have a desire to tell others about Jesus, amen. I think the thing that indicates that a person is genuinely saved 
is they want to see somebody else saved, amen. <laughs> Remember the woman at the well, the Bible says, as soon as she took of that water that she'd never had thirst again, the Bible says she went out into the city and said, come see a man which told me all things ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Her first desire when she got saved was to tell somebody else what had happened to her. And I believe that that's going to happen in our lives, amen. So then uh, the, the Great Commission was given for them to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. And that's the, the, the situation that we're living in today. Now, in 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4, amen, we're coming up to a promise that was made. The people in, Thess in Thessalonica, uh, the Apostle Paul had heard that they were worried about the rapture, amen. They were worried that the, their loved ones that have died would not be able to participate in the rapture, amen. So the Apostle Paul wrote them and told them, oh, yes, they will, amen. And he said in, in uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4 and verse number 13, he said, I would ha not have you to be ignorant, brother, concerning in them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. He said, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be called up together with the Lord. To meet the, uh, we, we called up together with them to meet the Lord in the air, amen. Now I'm looking forward to that time, amen. It could happen at any moment, amen. The thing about it is, if it does, I'm ready to go, amen. I'd like to be among those that actually go up in the rapture, amen. Uh, the, but, but the Bible tells us in, the, in these verses that Jesus Christ is coming again one day, amen. And when he comes, those that are born again, those that were born again and have already passed away, their bodies are coming out. You know, the Bible says the dead in Christ shall rise first. Somebody once asked me, why, why do you think that's going to happen? Well, they've been buried. They've got six feet farther to go, so <laughs> they'll be where they have to come forth first so they can be together with us to meet the Lord in the air. Amen. Can you imagine mom and dad were godly Christian people, raised me in the nurture and admonition of the Lord? Can you imagine going to the graveside to lay some flowers there? And all of a sudden the trumpet sounds, amen, and mom and dad's right there standing beside you, and we get to take their hands and rise up to meet the Lord in the air? Amen. That would be a blessed event. Amen. To be able to see them. So the Bible tells us that Jesus Christ is coming back. That, well, something that we know of as the rapture of the church. Amen. And now uh, the, the commitment of this age. Amen. Now in the age that we're living in, salvation is by grace through faith in the Lord. But after the tribulation, or excuse me, after the, the, the uh, uh, rapture takes place, amen, and the tribulation begins, there's going to be a difference, amen. There's going to be a difference. It's going to be now salvation plus something else. Today, salvation comes by grace alone. Now, it's the grace of God that saves no matter what. But during the tribulation period, there's going to be something added to it. Let's find out what the Bible says. Turn with me to Matthew chapter number uh, 24. And verse number 6, the Bible says, And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in divers places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and hate one another, and many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. And because the iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Now notice what it says here. This is Jesus talking, and he says, But he that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. Amen. Now, as a born-again Christian in the age of grace that we're living today, I believe in the eternal security of the blood-bought believer. Amen. Jesus made a statement. He said, Not everybody that says, Lord, Lord, it's going to enter into heaven. He says, but he that doeth the will of my Father. Amen. So what, what does that talk about? That means you got to have good works in order to get into heaven. Amen. Again, as I say, the good works follow as the results of your salvation, but that's not what gets us, gets us into heaven. Amen. The Bible says it's the grace of God that gets us into heaven. Amen. And when the Bible tells us that we're saved, the Bible says he's cleansed us from all unrighteousness. So the word all is inclusive. It means my past, my present, and even my future. Now, 
Now, the Bible does tell me, as a child of God, whom God loveth, he chasteneth, amen. And if I step outside the will of God, he gives me that opportunity to confess my sin, amen, and to turn away from it. But if I, can, uh, if I continue in this sin, amen, then God has to take control and he begins to, to chasten his children, amen. How many people in here have ever had a child, amen, that disobeyed you and you said to that little child, get out of my house, you're no longer my son. Get out of my house, you're no longer my daughter, amen. Is that what we do with our children? No, no. What do we do? We, we, we chasten them. We correct them. Amen. Amen. And, and the Bible says, I will be his father and he will be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. But my mercy shall not depart away from him. Amen. When we look at the direct words of Jesus, the Bible, uh, the, the Bible says, he that heareth my word, Jesus speaking, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath what? everlasting life, amen, and shall not come into condemnation, but is already passed from death into life, amen. So if a person could lose their salvation, amen, then Jesus just told a lie. Isn't that right? He said, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath not the possibility of everlasting life, but everlasting life. And he says, and shall not come into condemnation, but is already passed from death into life. Amen. I'm putting my faith and trust in what Jesus did for me on Calvary. Amen. But now when the rapture takes place, amen, the, the Bible says, Jesus said that they must endure to the end. There's going to be a difference there. Amen. Now there's going to be people that's going to be saved during the uh, uh, tribulation period. I honestly believe if a person has heard on the face of this earth the plan of salvation uh, and turned their hearts away, they rejected Jesus. Amen. But they knew the plan of salvation. Somebody had handed them a gospel track and they, and, and they read it. Somebody listened to a, a, a sermon in a church but walked out without being saved. Amen. They've heard, amen, about uh, how they could be saved, but they rejected it. I don't believe that they can be saved even in the tribulation period, amen, uh, because the Bible says that they might all be damned who believed in not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness, amen. But there's a lot of people in the world today, amen, that have never heard the plan of salvation. They don't know that, that they're a sinner. They don't realize that. They don't realize that Jesus came to die and to suffer on Calvary to take their sins away. The Bible says he hath made him to be sin for us that we may be not made the righteousness of Christ through him, amen. They don't realize that. And that might come to a point, in, even during the tribulation period, where they might get saved, amen, where they might decide in their heart that they would want to turn their hearts to the Lord and serve him. The point of it is, Jesus said that if they endure to the end. See, during the tribulation period, at the coming of this Antichrist, amen, the Bible talks about the Antichrist as the beast. He displays himself as an extremely intelligent and charismatic person. He's a very desirable world leader, amen. He's going to form a, a ten-nation confeder confederation, and he's going to form a covenant and a pact with Israel. The first three and a half years, amen, after the uh, the, the, the um, Antichrist is revealed, amen. The Bible says for the first three and a half years, he's going to be this great world leader that everybody's going to look to and say, what a great man he is, amen. And he brings peace to the Middle East and makes this pact with the Jews and says, rebuild your temple now in, in, in Jerusalem. And everybody is so happy with this. The Jewish people, amen. Now, there's a certain uh, group of Jews, 144,000, that are going to be sealed at the beginning of the tribulation period, amen. And these 144,000, uh, I'll tell you, they're not Jehovah's Witnesses, amen. They're, they're actual uh, 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 Jews, amen, from the 12 tribes of Israel, amen. 12,000 from each tribe, amen. They're going to realize that the Christ that we crucified 2,000 years ago was, in fact, our Messiah. The Bible tells us they'll weep, amen, and they'll cry out to the Lord and they'll become the, the, the witnesses, amen, that'll go throughout the, uh, the tribulation period preaching the grace of God, amen, and the love of God, amen, for what he's done, amen. The Bible tells us in the beginning of the tribulation period they exist, at the end, still on earth, that they're here. God's going to supernaturally protect these people, amen, and, and uh, they're going to have a, a big deal to do with, with the uh, 
dispensation of the kingdom that we're getting ready to head into. Amen. Uh, but the, the, this uh, Antichrist now is allowing the, 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 the rest of the nation of Israel. Now remember, the reason the Jews are here to begin with is because they've rejected Christ. Now a Jew today can get saved just because the Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. Uh, uh, he that cometh unto me, I will in no wise cast out. So anybody of any walk of life can get saved today by putting their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, and now during the tribulation period, if a person gives their heart to the Lord, uh, th- th- then they're going to they're gonna be under the rule of the uh, Antichrist. Amen. And three and a half years after uh, the Antichrist has brought peace to the Middle East and he's thought of as such a great guy, Amen. Uh, an occurrence called the abomination of desolation takes place. And what that is, he says, now that the temple is built, he, uh, the, the false prophet takes an uh, image of the beast and puts it inside of the temple. Amen. And then the Antichrist declares himself that he is God. And he sits here in the throne as though he is God. I mean, he calls himself God. And then the, the Bible says the false prophet, the second beast of, uh, of Revelation chapter number 13, he said he's going to cause all the people of the world that they have to worship the image of the beast and take his number in their foreheads or in their forehands. And those that are not willing to take the number in their foreheads or in their four hands are going to be enemies of the government. And the Bible says he'll have many of those to be put to death, that they will die. He said they will not be able to buy or sell or provide for their families. Amen. They're going to be enemies of this one world government. And there's going to be chaos throughout the world. Amen. As this man stands in, in, in the, uh, or has his image in the uh, temple declaring himself that he is God. Amen. He performs miracles, the Bible says, during this tribulation period. It's going to be a dreadful time. Aren't you glad we don't have to go through even one second of it? Now, the Bible says in this world you shall have tribulation, and that's trials and and, and problems that we're going to seek while we're on the face of this earth or experience while we're on this earth. It says, but as far as the great tribulation period, Jesus is coming back first. Amen. And I'm going home with him. Amen. We're going to be in heaven while all this stuff is going on on the face of this earth. If you know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. The thing about it is now when when Jesus made the statement during this time, when he was speaking of the tribulation period that's coming, and he said, he that endureth to the end. See, a person might make their mind up and say, yes, I want to serve Lord. We're going to put our faith and trust in Jesus. We're going to live for him. But later on down the world, they'll know that the... the, the, uh, uh, soldiers, amen, the authorities of, of the Antichrist are out to f- find you, to put you in jail and have you put to death. If you don't have that number in your forehead or in your forehand, you can't buy for your children. You can't provide for your family, amen. And if a person who, who has actually made a, made a desire in their heart said that they were going to serve the Lord, but they finally got to the point, we just can't take it. I, I got to take that number, amen. Once they take that number so that they can buy and sell, amen, they've doomed themselves. The Bible says every single person that takes the number of the, of the beast are going to be cast into hell, amen. 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 I'm so grateful for the grace of God today that's extended just by realizing that he died for my sins and asking Jesus to save me. That's what he did. He came into my heart. He made me one of his children. He adopted me in the family. He, he, he provides my needs here on the face of this earth today. I can go to him boldly anytime in prayer. Amen. I thank God every Sunday we have a prayer time here in the back of the church before the services to ask for God's blessings and such. We, as the children of God, can come boldly before the throne of God and pray and, 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 and ask our petitions, amen. We can come to him when we have needs in our lives, amen. He's the great provider, amen. We can come there when we have sin in our life and ask his forgiveness, and it comes, amen, to, to all of those that are willing to ask, amen. I'm so grateful for the grace of God, amen, that's been extended, amen. So the Bible says that whosoever endureth to the end shall be saved. If a person, no matter what they have to face, if they've put their faith and trust in Jesus during this time, amen, during the tribulation period, and they refuse to take the mark of the beast, and even at the end of the tribulation period, whether they die, you know, in, in the uh, uh, book of Revelations, 
the, the, the first of the uh, seven seals, we talk about uh, uh, the martyred remnant, amen, those that died for their faith in the Lord during the tribulation period. And then there's another group of people in the end of the tribulation period that survived through the tribulation period. Amen. And we're going to find out when Jesus comes back, there's got to be somebody on the face of this earth. Now, the Bible says if God didn't cut them the, uh, uh, the time short, amen, that no, uh, no flesh on the earth would, would live, amen. But there is going to be people that will still be alive on the face of this earth. Sadly enough, there's going to be those that did endure to the end, those that uh, uh, kept their faith in Jesus Christ, even though they had much hardships that they were going to have to go through here on the face of the earth, amen, uh, but they're going to be on the face of the earth. There's also going to be people that, that, that survive uh, the tribulation period who were not saved, amen, who did not put their faith and trust in Jesus, who did not serve God, amen, and who did wrong to the uh, 144,000 Jewish people. We'll find out uh, uh, the next time we're in the pulpit here that we'll, we'll find out exactly what happens to these people, amen, uh, on the face of this earth as Jesus comes back and judges the nations, amen. And now we got to the seven seals, amen, which, which is an overview of the general uh, events of the uh, a tribulation period, amen, uh, and we already talked about the martyred remnant and the 144,000 Jews that were sealed. Then we have the seven trumpets, amen. I'm not going to go through everything, but we find out that hail and fire uh, fell from heaven and a third of the vegetation of the earth was burned up, amen. Now, can you imagine, amen, uh, the shortages that we've seen on the earth today, amen? Uh, something will come up, there's a shortage of eggs, amen. So eggs went up to $7 a, a dozen and all for a while around here. And uh, you know, just shortages. But can you imagine if one third of the vegetation of the earth has, uh, has been destroyed, amen, uh, uh, by this hail and fire that falls from heaven, amen, there's going to be a great deal of famine on the face of this earth. Amen. The Bible tells us about a star that falls into the fresh water supplies of the earth, and one third of the fresh water supplies are turned into wormwood or become a uh, 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 poisonous. Amen. And look at all the uh, fish and the uh, sea life, or, or not, it's not sea life as far as fresh water, but the fish and all that we get in, 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 our, in the rivers and the waters. And of course, uh, you know, when I was a kid, you never thought about buying water, <laughs> amen. That was something that was always readily available for free, amen. Uh, but everywhere you go now, they're selling bottles of water, and you got to pay almost as much as you do for a, a soda today in a lot of places, amen. But can you imagine with one-third of the entire world's water supply is gone, Amen. How, how, how people are going to be searching out for that water and the prices that it's going to go to, how hard it's going to be to uh, 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 receive these things. And then, and then the Bible tells us about darkness falls upon the seed of the beast. Amen. And one third of the sun and one third of the moon and one th third of the stars are going to be darkened. Amen. Amen. And it's going to be a dreadful, terrible time. You know, to talk about that next week. Uh, I think it's actually tomorrow, amen, how many people are going to be sitting there looking up into the sky with these dark glasses on to see the solar eclipse and how things are going to get dark on the face of the earth, amen. Wouldn't it be wonderful if they're looking up there and Jesus Christ comes back? Wouldn't it be wonderful for us? <laughs> Maybe not for them, amen. A lot of them, they're not saved, amen. Uh, but they're looking to the skies to see the darkening of the sun when the moon comes between the earth and the sun, amen. Uh, it, it, it's just the handiwork of God. <laughs> Amen. He is the one that created all of these things and brings these things into view. And it's a fascinating thing to see and to look at. Amen. But can you imagine one third of the sun and the moon and the star being completely darkened for the... Then it had the seven thunders. Amen. Now the seven thunders was, was mentioned in the Bible. John saw what happened in the seven thunders. But then God turned around and said, don't write what you saw. Amen. He says, we're going to keep that uh, a secret now. They'll find out when it happens, amen. So we don't know uh, what these seven thunders, the judgment that hits on the face of this earth, amen. But I'm sure they're not going to be good, amen. And then we have the seven vials, amen. Uh, this was toward the end of the tribulation period as we were getting the seven vials. The first vial, a noisome and grievous sore fell upon those that worship the beast, amen. Uh, so God, God is kind of fed up now with, with, with how people has, has spit upon uh, uh, his, his plan of salvation, the grace of, uh, of uh, uh, he and his son. And, I mean, th th there's people today now that make fun. When I was a kid, amen, uh, even for people that were not saved, most of the people that had a certain respect and honor 
for the name of God, amen. But if you see some of the things that are out there in the world today, the, the, the name of Jesus is made fun of, amen. Uh, uh, there was a, a, a television show on, and I didn't watch it, amen, but I did read about it from one of the uh, Christian magazines where they made Jesus out to be some womanizing person who went around uh, flirting with ladies and such and all kinds of things like that. And they're degrading the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It should get us angry. Amen. But can you imagine how God is so upset now, how God is angry now? Listen, if you look in 1 John chapter number 5, read that uh, 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 throughout, the, well, actually all five chapters of 1 John, you'll see so many times the word love is mentioned. And, and it actually says God is love. And you know, that's what he is today. God, uh, God commended his love toward us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. Christ loves us, God loves us, and, 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 and God is nothing but love. Uh, Dottie Rambo years ago wrote a song, amen, and uh, she wrote it as though it was a sinner, amen, who had died and, and was facing the judgment of God. And in that song, there's a line that says, Only yesterday the God I'll soon be facing was a God of love, and forgiveness. But now as I stand before the judgment seat of, of uh, Jesus, he's a God of wrath and vengeance. Amen. Now, I, I want to be on the side of the love and forgiveness. Amen. Uh, he, that's what he is today. He's willing to, uh, to, to, to save anybody that's willing to come into him. Jesus said, all that the Father giveth shall come to me, and him that cometh unto me I will in no wise cast out. But tomorrow, amen. Uh, the next step in this, when death hits our heart, it's too late, amen. When the death angel comes and takes us away, amen. Or those that have heard the word of God preached and turned away when the rapture uh, takes place, it's going to be too late for them, amen. And God's wrath and vengeance is going to be poured, upon, poured out upon all of those that defied his name, amen, refused to serve him, amen, and put people to death because they served the Lord, amen. And God's vengeance is being poured out now, and there's a grievous sore that falls upon all these men and there's boils on their body and they're, and they're gnawing their tongues for pain, amen. The Bible says the sea becomes blood. The Bible says it turns into the blood of a dead man and all the creatures, the Bible says, of the sea, all of them, it says, dies, amen, because it's turned to blood. The fresh water supplies become blood and, and, and the angel speaks and he says, worthy art thou, O Lord. He says, they shed the, uh, the blood of the saints and now you've given them blood to drink, amen. So all over the seat of, of, the, of the kingdom of the Antichrist, they're going to have nothing but blood to drink. Amen. And then the Bible says the sun is going to scorch men with a fervent heat. Amen. Can you imagine standing out in the sun? We get sunburned pretty much now. We've got to put things on our arms and all. But the Bible says the sun is going to scorch men with a very fervent heat. You talk about global warning, amen, warming. Amen. It's going to be terrible during that time, during the tribulation period. Amen. And then it says the kingdom of the Antichrist, the kingdom where, where he is, his kingdom is going to be turned completely dark. Amen. And man will gnaw their tongues with pain. And then the Bible talks about the angels that are going to dry up the Euphrates River, amen. So it allow the, uh, the kings of the east to come from the east. And what's happening here now, they're getting ready for this battle of Armageddon that we talked about. That thing, I think that was the last thing we spoke about before my surgery, amen. And the battle of Armageddon now, they're shaping up for that, amen. Uh, uh, when you look in the Old Testament, amen, you find out the Euphrates River, that was the eastern border of the promised land. The western border, it says from the, from the, uh, from the river in, in Egypt, probably the Nile, to the river of the Euphrates, amen. But the Euphrates River was so deep and so wide, it was a, it was a defense for the uh, people of Israel during that time because the kings of the east could not cross it and come over to them. Amen. But the Bible says that this uh, river, this great river Euphrates, is going to be dried up. And it says there's only one person that can do that, and that's God himself. Listen, he created this earth. He could certainly dry up a river. <laughs> Amen. And, and, and then the Bible talk, talks about how they, uh, uh, the three unclean frogs come out and, and how they have the, uh, the, the, the ability to perform miracles. And they gather the kings, amen, of the Antichrist, and they bring them together from the east, and they're getting ready for this great battle, amen. 
And, and, and their desire now is to destroy the army of God and to destroy uh, Jesus, amen, and everybody that's going to put their faith and trust in the Lord, they're going to die as far as what the Antichrist said. But the Bible tells us that Jesus, amen, that Jesus comes back, amen. He's sitting on a white horse and he brings his armies with him, amen. Amen. Now, you know who his armies are? That's you and I. Amen. We're coming back with Jesus to the face of this earth. Amen. And he gathers together. There's an army against uh, 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 God and against Jesus and against those of the Lord. And this army, the Bible says, is 200 million strong. Amen. And he says the battle, amen, is going to cause blood up to the horse's bridle. Amen. Many are going to die. Why? Because Jesus is coming back on that white horse. Amen. And the Bible Bible says with the sword of his mouth, amen, the word of God, Jesus will speak, amen, and the armies of the Antichrist are going to be completely destroyed, amen, and they're going to die that day. And then the Bible tells us that the Antichrist, amen, that he's going to take the Antichrist and the false prophet, amen, that, that is helping him, the, the, the political leader and the religious leader of that day, and they're going to be cast alive into the lake of fire where they'll be tormented day and night, Forever and forever, amen. Then the Bible told us that uh, the devil, Satan, God gets a hold of old Satan and he binds him and he throws him into the, uh, into the abyss. He throws him into hell, amen, where he's going to be for a thousand years. Now we'll get to a little bit to, uh, as we start uh, the next lesson in here in the kingdom of God. We'll find out why that is, why it's a thousand years and what happens after that thousand years is concerned. Amen. But, this, but during that thousand years, the beast and the false prophet are in hell, and they will be there forever. Amen. Now, that hasn't happened yet. It's happening in the future. Amen. Amen. We did look in the, in, into the Bible and found something really interesting, and I believe it with all my heart that the Antichrist is actually going to be a resurrected Judas Iscariot. And there's pretty strong evidence in the Bible. Now, it doesn't directly state that, but the Bible tells us in Revelation, the beast that you saw was, he once existed. He says he is not, he doesn't exist then, amen, when he was, uh, saw this vision. And then he said, and he will send, ascend out of the bottomless pit, amen. Uh, the Apostle Paul called him the son of perdition, the, 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 the beast, or the Antichrist, the son of perdition. Jesus, in the, in the uh, New Testament, called the, uh, Judas. He said, all that you've given to me I have kept, and none of them is lost but the son of perdition, that the scriptures might be fulfilled. Now, if Judas was the son of perdition, perdition meaning of hell, and he went into hell, amen, when he died, amen, and then the apostle Paul says that the beast, amen, is the son of perdition, and he's coming out of hell, amen. It's a pretty good indication to me that Judas and the Antichrist is the same. Now, I believe that. If you don't believe that, I'm not going to say you're some kind of an apostate. You've got to believe what I believe, amen. But I do have Bible to stand behind it, amen. <laughs> Judas Iscariot, amen, might be the Antichrist. I can't point out who he is, amen. Uh, but the spirit of the Antichrist is coming back to the face of this earth, whether it's him or not. He's on the way, amen, amen. We always talk about uh, Jesus Christ is coming soon and he could come today. And you got to understand, if Jesus comes today, that means the Antichrist is already here. He just hasn't been revealed yet, <laughs> amen. Uh, the Bible tells us when the uh, rapture takes place, then he's going to be revealed. And the, the, the people will know who he is here on the face of this earth. Amen. Uh, so next time that we get in here, we'll be talking about the coming of Christ in glory and what happens on the face of the earth after Jesus returns and sets his kingdom up. And we'll see many verses, amen, where, where it was prophesied that Jesus was going to have a messianic kingdom here on the face of this earth. He's going to occupy the throne of David, amen, and he's going to reign as Lord of lords and King of kings on the face of this earth. Amen. For that thousand year as well as throughout eternity in the new heaven and the new earth. But we'll get all of that when we get into it. Amen. I hope you had a blessing this morning. And any questions, any comments, anything anybody want to say before we close? All right. We got about a. F oh, yes. And one of the commentaries I read, it, it, if you notice, it doesn't say on the, 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 uh, in the Bible. It doesn't say the number will be on, but it will be in the hand or in the forehead. 
and uh, they've got so they can inject some gel into your hand now and, and uh, put a number in your hand. You can go to a, a store somewhere, put your hand by itself over some of these uh, scanning readers, and they can pick it up from the number that's actually in the hand. That's being done in some places today right now. Amen. But the mark of the beast, uh, in order to buy or sell during those times, you're going to have to have it. And kind of look at it right now. How many people can get a job today if you don't have a Social Security number? How many people can get insurance today if you don't have a Social Security number? Almost any, We have to have a number, amen. <laughs> That's just pointing to some of the things that the Bible said are going to happen in the last days, amen. Amen. The difference is we're going to have it placed on our, or in our bodies, amen, during that tribulation period. Amen. I'm not going to take it. I'm not going to be here. <laughs> amen. I'm going to be with Christ at home in heaven. Amen. amen. And you can too. If you're not sure of your salvation today, don't leave here today without being saved. Don't leave without knowing that Christ is your Lord. These things have ever been to you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know you have eternal life. Amen. Fifteen minutes. Then we'll go to the 11 o'clock service. Don't nobody run off. We're looking for a good time. You folks at home, amen. We're glad you were able to tune in with us. Be sure to tune back in at 11 o'clock. We're looking for a great time here today at Colonial.